Gang so much infrastructure, energy and resources into the electoral process if voting didn't work. We want to emphasize to all the citizens, to young people, uh, to professionals, to people in urban areas, people in rural areas, elections work. And if there's ever been a need for Zimbabweans to come together, it's now because our change depends on it. We cannot afford a further five years of the same. We are winning by elections. We are. And that's something that I'm sure um, Smakone is profoundly aware of. The citizens are aware of it. But I want to emphasize that we're winning despite the odds. We're winning despite the odds, but that doesn't make us blind to the odds. The kind of margins of error which have been spoken about will make a huge difference come the harmonized election. So the fact that we are winning elections is not going to stop us from demanding electoral reforms. Those electoral reforms are necessary. And if anything, the by-election process for us, the reason we are participating, is because they're a dry run to see the efficacy, the readiness uh, of ZEC. Do they, to test whether they pass the integrity test, the constitutionality test, the transpar transparency test. And as the dossier that we submitted indicates, they're failing on a number of fronts. Citizens themselves will have gone uh, to polling stations during the by-elections and found their names not there. You'll see a husband, their name is in the, the voters' role, and yet the wife is being posted somewhere else. The presiding officer says, well, just go and check. Could I not be my polling station to check if your name is there? That's simply not acceptable, which is why we insist on a credible vote. It's known in, in various constituencies, in various wards, uh, that ZANU-PF has been dishing out uh, you know, uh, handouts to citizens who can demonstrate that they voted uh, for ZANU-PF through a, a photo of a, 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 a ballot slip. We also have the issue of traditional leaders who are captured uh, by ZANU-PF. People are told, that assisted voter crisis is creating huge problems for us, and we've drawn this to the attention of ZEC. You can't have a situation where people are told you're going to be followed, you're going to be accompanied uh, in, the, in, the bowling, in, in the polling station so that people check where you voted. That detracts completely from the need for security of the vote and privacy of the vote. So when all is said and done, we continue to insist that if we don't resolve these issues, we're going to have another disputed election like the one we had in 2018. And the aftermath uh, of that election tells a big story. Just the other day, we were commemorating the 1st of August uh, shootings that took place by the military. That's the sort of response that comes from the citizenry. The citizenry themselves, it's not driven by political actors. When people are dissatisfied with the manner in which the election is, is run. So everything we're talking about now and the pressure we're mounting in good time is to ensure that we don't have that uh, again. And we do want to reassure the citizens that we have lobbied and we continue to lobby uh, both SADC and the African Union on these issues. There's need for long-term monitoring of our electoral playing field. There's no point just coming up uh, the night before election day to try and assess whether the, the voting environment is free and fair when throughout the year preceding the election, our members have been incarcerated, they've been shot, they've been abducted, they've been uh, persecuted a on a number of fronts. That simply does not cut it and does not meet uh, the test of a transparent, free, fair, verifiable election set out. The rural voters are not as um, impressionable as society would like to believe or as the traditional leaders themselves would like to believe. They know that the suffering they're facing uh, is suffering that will continue if they don't vote for change. Unfortunately, the crisis in Zimbabwe doesn't discriminate. When you go into the store and you cannot afford bread, you cannot afford mealy meal, you cannot afford cooking oil, it doesn't matter whether you support the Triple C or ZANU PF, everybody is suffering. And it's even worse in the rural areas because we've had a, a drought, there's a looming food crisis as well. So those citizens are awake and we're constantly conscientizing them and deliber deliberately uh, creating strategies to ensure that they're safe come voting day. And I think we employ a number of those strategies, for example, in Chipinia, to ensure that a citizen is allowed to vote to ensure that our polling agents are on the ready to identify 
traditional leaders who on voting day are intimidating citizens. So it's not as though we're sitting back and complaining, sitting back and feeling sorry for ourselves. We do have strategies in place, but that does not take away from the constitutional obligation of SEC to monitor these events, to ensure that all parties comply with the code of conduct, and to ensure that they don't stray in that regard. You'll be aware of what happened uh, there's that video of a, a rural meeting taking place, people saying, no, chamisa nga uraiwe, bambe triple singa nga uraiwe. All those things, that should be alert. You can't have the police conducting a month-long investigation when there's evidence that's clear as day that someone here is doing the wrong thing. So we are pushing that traditional leaders thing. It's, it's top of mind in our reforms. President Nelson Chamisa is on record, our chain champion in chief saying that our candidate selection process in 2023 or for the 2023 elections is going to be a complete departure from the past. All candidates, all, are going to be selected by the communities they wish to represent. We're going to obviously unveil when we closer to the time of our launch the process by which this should be done. What we implore to the citizens is plug in to the community candidate selection process. It's no longer business as usual where a candidate is foisted upon a particular community. People are going to choose for themselves. And people are going to lead in terms of the criteria. We are doing consultations. People insist on a person who lives in the community, a person who's active in the community, a person who's got integrity, a, people who a person who's competent, people, a person who believes in the transformation agenda. So all these things are going to be criteria that we're going to use, but the citizens are going to be at the forefront of deciding because the key guiding philosophy uh, or ideology or uh, North Star of the Triple C is that citizens should be at the center of all decisions that are made. And so the parliament you'll see in 2023 20, following the election is going to be a parliament that you select. And this starts from the candidate, the movement candidate selection process itself. So let's all plug in. You don't wait until voting day 2023 to participate. We're going to roll out both the volunteer program and this community candidate selection program to ensure that you decide who you want to represent. Voting is a constitutional imperative. Nobody has the right to take the right to vote away from any citizen. Citizens deserve to choose their leaders. They have the right to choose who represents them in council, in parliament, and at presidential level. It's citizens who choose. And that's why the will of the people is a sacrosanct <coughs> principle of any constitutional uh, democracy. And so nobody, Zamu PF, cannot take away uh, people's right to vote. Coming specifically now to, to SADC and the AU. Now, obviously, we have sharpened our approach uh, significantly since the, the 2018 election, we took very important lessons, and even with these by-elections. And so this has informed our engagement with the international community, particularly regional bodies, uh, around the electoral process in, 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 in that's going to take place in Zimbabwe. You'll note that there's been a shift in approach by the region when it comes to elections. We saw uh, the work that SADC did in Zambia, the work that they did in Malawi, the, the work that they continue to do in other jurisdictions. And so we're ensuring that we have a dossier of information that we give to them so that they are prepared and know from the get-go what's taking place in Zimbabwe. And all these facts are object objectively uh, verifiable. It's no secret, uh, you know, the torture that's taking place, uh, the weaponization of, of the legal system, the court system, the abuse by Zanu PF, of the police service. All these things are being placed on record so that we ensure that there's no disputed election come 2023. Now, this is not just urgent domestically. It's also urgent for other regional actors, other countries. The forced migration crisis in Zimbabwe started to create, to create domestic crises in other jurisdictions, call it South Africa, call it Botswana, call it Zambia, wherever it is. You know, so many of our citizens, and I think that the data tells us beyond three million, are forced to migrate because of the governance crisis, because of the economic crisis, because of the failure uh, by Zanu PF to rule us competently and constitutionally. Parents, pastors, teachers, 
uh, work professionals, mentors, please let's speak to our young, let's encourage them to vote, let's reinforce the message that voting works, trust me, it does, it makes all the difference, but even beyond that, we have to participate to ensure that we're part of the change we want to see. Don't sit back and outsource uh, your struggle to Ellen or Ian. Make sure you get involved. Like I said, we're just about to roll out a, a wide-ranging volunteer program, so there'll be space, space for everybody to get involved, whether you're a lawyer, whether you're a creative, whether you're a doctor, whether you're an accountant, acting for change, whether you're an artist, a musician. There's space for everyone. Let's make this the biggest election that they've seen in the region. Uh, President Chamis has already emphasized that the campaign that we're going to run for 2023 is going to be the biggest, the brightest, it's going to be a, a full campaign. We're going to continue to inspire hope, a thirst for change, emphasizing hope, accountability, and development so that we can build a Zimbabwe that we can all be proud of. So I, I re-emphasize, I can't emphasize enough. Let's all register. To it's on Prince Miller Entertainment TV. Remember, guys, to like, share, comment, and follow, and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of our new uploads that you do upload. Yes, you just uh, watched a video, a long video from uh, Fadzai Mahere. It's nice to see her. Uh, she's back, and uh, she's back. You can see that her energy is different, and uh, yes, she's on top of things i mean uh those are some of the main 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 issues uh that uh you know uh opposition political parties should be uh you know acquiring with zek as we uh move towards my elections are recall next year 2023 is uh but anyway uh i went on social media of course remember this press conference was um was there yesterday and yes uh yesterday they did a press conference when it comes to the my elections remember what uh manja manja but then go up in the road a cool campaign for my elections article uh next year 2023 and so our favorite journalist hopio uh, did comment on this uh video he said that uh, uh this is an, an important message uh, by triple c uh through his national spokesperson uh, fadzema here seven pf wants to spread the message that elections don't work in order to discourage the youth from from registering to vote uh, there are challenges but citizens should register to vote advocate uh fazema here explain some of the electoral challenges that zimbabwe faces due to the npf manipulation which includes assisted voting which is meant to intimidate citizens into losing their right to choose their own candidates of choice on election day in rural areas Contrary to the ZANU-PF intended propaganda, the rural votes are a way that their suffering is caused by the corrupt government through looting and incompetence. Mayere said that the rural folks' suffering will continue if the rural folks don't vote for change and uh, they too know it. Mayere added that all parliamentary and local council candidates for 2023 will be chosen by the citizens themselves unlike in the past where the party structures choose the candidates ZANU-PF is frantic pushing for triple c to have visible structures for infiltration advocate Mayere also spoke about the challenges of state institution abuse by ZANU-PF two triple c members of parliament job scala and godfrey story are now political detainees locked up at Kurubi prison for exercising their rights as lawyer and member of parliament she ended by imploring all community leaders to encourage their communities to go out and register to vote. She said Triple C will run the biggest and brightest election campaign in 2023. She said they will focus on hope, change and accountability in their campaign. And so uh, she should talk about Nyama structures here, saying that um, you know my councillors and my MPs will be chosen by citizens. And uh, my citizens in Dwarchang to choose my MPs and my councillors in constituencies. Sakapana need the structures a good tea energy in Guyan Ning now a last time in Guyan Ning Iowa. But citizens are good to say what now is so good. Nigrigino in Gamiri, Nigrigin in Gamiri, then an off would own it as a sure. Again, the Abu Darpa number one, Sagandia Mira Jumbinoi, Cancellan in Gikini, Dosha Mira Jumbinoi, one on Dosha Tower, and around that Zavakiri, and the Bogos, my MPs, Nema Cancellors, Gavaya, and Nogaram Jumboizo, because uh, over the past uh, decades of seen Udi uh, MP. And the MP of Gokwe, Anna Jigara Borodio, and Kugokan, and there may be once in a while, 
a chin de sera a marake sugar ne mafuta but ane jikara ku borodo saka hazve zviri kuitika ku kokyo ane kari ku borodo saka you know ma MPs ne ma councillors ngaye vano vari mu community ndokuti ane vine pipe yakaputika yemvura kana kuti yesewage tina ba kwake tino mucho yakuno yaone pipe yapa yatsemuka and councillor we act we act because muno anogara muna round e momo you can knock at his or her door at any time and so i think it's a good strategy i will send this kind of triple c that's why on uh, wednesday i say that uh triple c is planning something or planners i wonder 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 so uh soon they will start revealing uh some of their plans because it seems like as uh, zanu pf and other people what's next for them the reason why is because uh, according to what hope said again uh previously the men said that chamisa is the main ingredient of the elections that are next year 2023 so it will take more than uh, talking it will take um, you know people on the ground kutivanya supinda ma communities like at one day and uh, it will take a lot of work uh for a uh, triple c uh you know supporters kutivanya so uh bata basa pa ground because all know my tactics and shanti squad for my elections can go my elections as shika even on the day of elections we all know the uh, tricks are not watching this a good aku zunga is a tongue is on a go gonna say kuru kutu wa votile pa nengo wa singa du votile and it's so we're gonna be keeping you guys in the loop regarding to uh this uh every wednesday uh this issue my elections every wednesday on our road to 2023 you know elections at uh, seven o'clock at a time on prince minute it's semi tv but i do agree 100 percent with what uh fazema i say on that video yes those are very 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 crucial um uh, topics so guys this is the audio thoughts prince on prince Milan semi tv thank you very much for listening and watching remember to like share comment and follow bless up